Hello, hello. My name is uh, Jones, and uh, today we are going to look at intestinal obstruction. This is in the studies where we are looking at some um, conditions uh, that are found within acute abdomen conditions. Okay, so there are a lot of conditions that constitute acute abdomen, and intestinal obstruction is one of them. By definition, uh, intestinal obstruction occurs when uh, the content of uh, the intestine or the lumen of the intestine blocks uh, the normal flow of uh, the bowel content. What it means is that when you're looking at intestinal obstruction, it can either be partial or complete blockage of intestinal lumen resulting from mechanical or non-mechanical obstruction. The characteristics, signs, and symptoms include abdominal distension, vomiting, and constipation. Okay, so that is what intestinal obstruction is. Okay, we are looking at either partial or complete a blockage of the lumen of the intestine that may be due to mechanical or non-mechanical obstruction. Characteristic signs and symptoms include abdominal distension, vomiting, constipation, and severe abdominal pain. Okay, severe abdominal pain being one of the main, main, main uh, signs and symptoms of intestinal obstruction. Bowel obstruction or intestinal obstruction is a mechanical or functional obstruction of the intestine preventing the normal transit of products of digestion which can occur at any level distal to the duodenum of the small intestine and when there is bowel obstruction it constitutes a medical emergency the obstruction can be partial or complete with the severity depending on the degree of obstruction, the degree to which vascular supply is uh, disturbed, and also looking at the disturbance to the lumen flow or the intestinal lumen flow. It can also be temporal due to manipulation during a surgery when uh, there is a surgical operation, laparotomy, okay, surgical operation of the abdomen, okay, during surgery, the handling of abdominal content can um, predispose to paralytic areas. So we are saying uh, intestinal obstruction may also come due to non-mechanical causes. Okay, so he said mechanical due to blockage and non-mechanical because of paralytic areas. So most bowel obstructions occur in the small intestine due to adhesions, hernias, or neoplasms. Okay, so let us uh, now look at the causes of intestinal obstruction. Okay, so when um, appreciating the causes of intestinal obstruction, there are basically two processes that may cause intestinal obstruction. There is a mechanical obstruction or there can be functional or neurologic obstruction. So when we're talking about mechanical obstruction, it will occur when there is an intraluminal or neural obstruction from pressure on the intestinal walls. This may cause constriction result in, resulting in partial obstruction, but may suddenly become complete obstruction. Okay, so mechanical obstruction, you, you have uh, something broken within the lumen of the intestine. Then when you talk about mechanical obstruction, it would, it would result from intussusception. Okay, so intussusception is just invagination within the lumen of or within the lumen of the intestine. So one part of the intestine invaginates or slips into parts located below it, thereby narrowing the lumen. So the other thing uh, to do with or mechanical obstruction, it would result due to. Uh, polypoids, uh, tumors, and, and uh, neoplasms. If you have some polypoids, they may block the flow of uh, 
uh, uh, GIT or gastrointestinal tract within, so they may f affect the flow. Okay, other mechanical obstruction would be due to stenosis. Other mechanical obstruction would be due to colon atresia. The other mechanical obstruction would be due to endometriosis. Other mechanical obstruction may be due to strictures. And also other mechanical causes may be due to adhesion. Okay, that is a loop of the intestine becomes adherent to areas uh, that heal slowly or scar after abdominal surgery, producing a kinking of intestinal loop leading to narrowing over the lumen. So uh, adhesion becomes one of the mechanical causes of intestinal obstruction. Hernias also can be one of the causes, uh, mechanical causes of, um, of intestinal obstruction because of protrusion of the abdominal organs or intestine through a weak area in the abdominal or, or muscle leading to complete obstruction um, complete obstruction of the bowel and also affecting the blood flow at that area where there is um, where there is where there is um, a twist okay okay or where there is a blockage with the uh, blockage because of herniation okay other mechanical causes of obstruction can be abscesses okay volvulus okay so when you're looking at volvulus it's just uh, twisting okay twisting within uh, the intestine so bowel twists and turns on itself leading to obstruction of uh, the lumen other mechanical causes of um, intestine obstruction would be diverticulus okay diverticulitis uh, okay so diverticulitis here we can give an um, example of a condition known as Crohn's disease okay so the other causes the other mechanical causes of obstruction can be pressure from tumors outside the lumen okay like uh, uterine fibroids they may cause uh, mechanical obstruction fecal impaction may also cause intestinal obstruction and also inflammatory bowel diseases may cause uh, intestinal obstruction okay so now when you look at non-mechanical or functional obstruction, this is where the intestinal musculature cannot uh, propel the content along the bowel and could be as a result of uh, conditions like amyloidosis, muscular dystrophy, uh, endocrine disorders such as uh, diabetes, or neurologic disorders such as uh, Parkinson's uh, syndrome. Okay, so paralytic areas is the most common cause of uh, paralysis due to non-mechanical or functional obstruction. So obstruction may be as a result of vascular obstruction to a segment of the bowel where blood supply will be cut off and uh, ischemia result followed by infection. Okay, so they can be infection, they can be uh, uh, gangrene forming and then obstruction. The vascular the vascular causes may be as a result of embolism, arthromatous changes in uh, blood vessels, and uh, thrombosis. Okay, so let us maybe also appreciate a brief pathophysiology of intestinal obstruction, having uh, laid down these uh, possible causes of intestinal obstruction. So the intestinal contents, fluid and gas accumulates above the intestinal obstruction. Okay, this will cause abdominal distension, irritation of the nerves, by um, irritation of the nerves by the distension also will also cause abdominal pain. Okay, so the nerve becomes irritated because of the distension and also the abdominal pain come because of uh, the distension. So with the increase in uh, distension, with the increase in distension, pressure within intestinal lumen also increases, thus causing a decrease in uh, venous and arterial capillary pressure. This will then cause the edema, congestion, necrosis, and eventually rupture or perforation of the bowel with the resultant peritonitis. Reflex vomiting 
may also be observed uh, in patient uh, with uh, obstruction due to abdominal distension and abdominal pressure that builds okay with uh, a reverse peristalsis so the vomiting causes a loss of hydrogen ions and potassium from the stomach uh, leading to leading to leading to reduction of um, of chlorides and potassium in blood and eventually metabolic alkalosis. Okay, when one has lost a lot of water because of uh, vomiting, dehydration and acidosis will follow because of uh, this uh, loss of uh, sodium and uh, sodium uh, and water. Okay, with all these uh, fluid losses, patient is likely to suffer from hypovolemic shock. Okay, so that would be the brief uh, pathophysiology of intestinal obstruction. Okay, so from uh, what we have established so far, it is also important that we can also look at the possible clinical picture of the patient. So from the brief patho pathophysiology, we can talk about some signs and symptoms that have been mentioned, okay, the abdominal distension, the abdominal pain, okay, those have already been established. But other signs and symptoms that we are likely to see may include dehydration, okay, and um, then there, there is intense uh, thirsty because of uh, dehydration. There is drowsiness. There can be generalized malaise. There can be patient can have um, uh, abdominal distension, and the uh, patient is also at risk of uh, hypovolemic shock. Okay, so the signs and symptoms within uh, intestinal obstruction can also be appreciated to do with um, mechanical, uh, mechanical within the small intestine. Okay, mechanical, um, mechanical intestinal obstruction within the small intestine or the small bowel. Then we can have also mechanical in the large bowel and also non-mechanical. Okay, so they can be. The signs and symptoms can be appreciated in terms of this. So in the small bowel, what you're likely to see, then in the, in the large bowel, after mechanical obstruction, what you're likely to see, and also non-mechanical. So when I say mechanical in the small bowel, there will be colic pain, nausea and vomiting, constipation, distended abdomen, abdominal tenderness, and also re rebound tenderness. Okay, then mechanical in the large bowel, there, is, there will be constipation. There will be vomiting in the later stage. There is constant hypostatic pain, okay, nausea, sudden onset of colic, abdominal pain after constipation. There is a distended abdomen, okay. There is high, there will also be visible loops of the large bowels. Then with this, you can tell that uh, there is a mechanical obstruction within uh, the large bowel. Then the non-mechanical here, signs and symptoms can be hiccup, constipation, decreased bowel, uh, decreased bowel sounds, and also abdominal discomfort. Okay, these uh, these can be noticed if one has uh, non-mechanical intestinal obstruction. Okay, so now we can also now talk about how to diagnose uh, this condition okay in diagnosing and uh, in diagnosing condition we say history is important then we go to physical examination then we do laboratory investigation then we do computerized uh, investigation so we remember with the mnemonic hp comp lab so h for history Okay, P for physical examination, comp computerized investigations like x-rays, uh, scans, and the likes. Then laboratory investigation, uh, blood tests uh, that can be taken. Okay, so history to be based on the symptoms that the patient is going to give us. So in history here, we have subjective and objective data that we can get. Subjective, those that the client tells you. Objective from uh, scientific reasoning based on this science, based on the pathophysiology of the condition, you'll be able to come up with a diagnosis.
On the physical examination, there is IPA, that is inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. So, physical examination of the patient may review abdominal distension, that is by inspection. Okay, by palpation, patient actually has severe abdominal pains. So before even palpate, you see that uh, patient who have abdominal pains that is relieved by some kind of uh, minimal pressure. Then computerized investigation includes abdominal X-ray, okay, which will show abnormal quantity of gases and fluids both in the bowels or in the lumen of the intestine. Laboratory findings, we can do full blood count, okay, and uh, blood a group and cross matching because it is a, a it is a surgical emergency. So erythrocyte sediment, sedimentation rate or ESR it will be raised. Uh, barium meal or barium swallow, barium enema can also be performed. Okay, this is uh, to just view the the lining of the the lining of the. Um, of the intestine. Uh, sigmoidoscopy from the word sigmoid can also be done visualizing the sigmoid. Abdominal scan can be done because the patient uh, tends to have some uh, blood in stool. We can also do stool for occult blood. Okay, so we can also examine stool for worms because worm infestation may lead to intestinal obstruction. Okay, so when we say what will be the management of this patient, that is pre-operatively. Okay, post-operatively is uh, just nursing someone with uh, an abdominal wound. But pre-operatively, we prepare this patient uh, like him in an emergency. So you have to decompress the bowel through use of uh, nasogastric tube. Okay, if... Um, Obstruction is complete, it will not warrant surgical intervention. So the surgical intervention is mostly dependent on the cause of obstruction. Hernia or adhesions will involve repairing the hernia or dividing the adhesion to which the intestine is attached. In some cases, a portion of the intestine will have to be removed and anastomo uh, anastomosis be done. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, we have been looking at intestinal obstruction, okay, which is a surgical emergency. Okay, by definition, intestinal obstruction, we have said it's partial or complete brokerage of the intestinal lumen. That may be due to either mechanical or non-mechanical causes. Characteristic signs and symptoms include abdominal pain, abdominal distension, vomiting, and constipation. Okay, then uh, we looked at, uh, the, at the causes of... Um, of intestinal obstruction. So we grouped them into mechanical obstruction and uh, neurological obstruction. Okay, neurological obstruction can also be looked at functional, functioning. Okay, functional obstruction. So mechanical obstruction here, we said coronatresia, endometriosis, stricture, adhesions, abscess, volvulus, diverticulitis, okay, or pressure from tumors. Then non-mechanical or non-mechanical or functional obstruction. Here we are looking at neurological causes. So may be due to condition like amyloidosis, okay, muscular dystrophy, okay, uh, endocrine disorders such as diabetes, okay, and also conditions like uh, Parkinson's disease. And we also quickly mention that after abdominal surgery, because of handling of uh, intestine during the surgery, patient may be prone to uh, paralytic areas. We gave the brief uh, pathophysiology of intestinal obstruction, and uh, to remember the pathophysiology 
uh, remember patho patho physiology f functioning okay so we are looking at the, we looked at the uh, the at the pathophysiology of intestinal obstruction so what is causing the pathology can be either mechanical or non mechanical then how the function is affected okay then uh, what will happen when there is an obstruction is that we have build up of gases and fluid just above that area and then reverse peristalsis happens leading to vomiting okay then the clinical picture Based on the pathophysiology, you know, this uh, muscle clamp, okay, that the patient is going to have because of uh, dehydration. Uh, there, there's uh, also clamp pain that is wave-like and a colic. And then uh, the patient may pass blood and, and mucus, but no fecal matter or flatus. Uh, the patient uh, may pass blood and uh, mucus but no fecal matter and then if obstruction is complete peristaltic movements um, initially become very vigorous and eventually assume a reverse direction where intestinal contents are propelled towards the mouth instead of going to the lectum so if the obstruction is in the idiom there is um, fecal vomiting that may occur dehydration may come may take place remember most waters uh, most water is absorbed in the large intestine so if uh, there is a, a small bowel a small bowel uh, blockage or obstruction patient is likely to slip into dehydration very easily okay drowsiness uh, because of uh, electric imbalance may be seen okay and because of intestine Okay, patient will feel interest if uh, they are dehydrated and there is general malaise. We have also looked at the signs and symptoms within this lesson that is to do with mechanical small bowel obstruction, to do with mechanical large bowel obstruction, and then the non-mechanical. After that, we went into the diagnosis of the condition. So when they say uh, what will be your management? So you start with diagnosis, uh, treatment, and then you go to nursing management. So when you're looking at uh, the diagnosis, you use the HP comp lab a mnemonic h for history uh, p for physical examination okay comp computerized investigation okay lab for laboratory investigations like uh, esr uh, full blood count and the likes that can be taken okay so then treatment is just the drugs that you're going to give but please this is a surgical emergency so we have talked at uh, putting an NG2 in order to decompress the uh, to decompress the the intestine or the abdomen, okay, from uh, the distension, and uh, the repair will depend depending on the cause of intestinal obstruction, so that it, it can be corrected the sage carry. Okay, so. That is what we have discussed on intestinal obstruction. If at all you have just listened to intestinal obstruction, I urge you to first listen to acute abdomen condition, then you come to intestinal obstruction because it will help to build on what we started as the foundation to understanding this lesson. Okay, so from me, I'm saying keep on studying.